Hey friend, Chris Van Deviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to demonstrate how you could use fat effects to multi-band process just about any instrument that you have in mind. Sometimes we need to pump up the heat on something like a kick drum or a bass line or a vocal. And we have a specific section that we want to process. Maybe you want to add a little more low end to that kick drum. Maybe you want to add some snap and sizzle to that snare. Whatever the case may be, sometimes we need to process a whole instrument, but just that one section of the instrument. And FatFX, one of the multi-effects processors that comes with Logic, has this exact ability. So let's examine how we can use FatFX to multi-band process your instruments. Now first, I have just a general riff that I've written. Let's take a quick listen to the first half. With these drums, we're just going to assume that it's just a stereo wave file and I can't really get into the details of just the kick or just the snare, but maybe I need to process one of those elements specifically. So let's check it out. Let's bring in fat effects and by default, however it's set up for you, I save my own default, but the section that we want to be most concerned with is this band pass section here. And I think it often gets overlooked, specifically the reject mix knob right here. Now the bandpass section allows us to bracket a specific section of our drum kit here. And let's just play around with it real quick. I'm gonna adjust the low and the high bands just to kind of bracket around a specific element. So we're able to bracket based on a low pass and a high pass filter. And then we have these resonance knobs that allows us to boost at the corner frequency. So let's play around with those. So let me try bracketing just the kick drum. Cool. So at this point, maybe I want to add some distortion. I want to add some bass enhancement, whatever the case may be. But obviously, we don't want our drum set to now just sound like this. So that's where the reject mix knob comes into play. Let's pump that up all the way. The beauty of the reject mix knob is that we can bring back everything outside of this bracketed band pass. We just reintroduce everything else, but the rest of the signal is not going to be processed by distortion or LFOs or anything else, just the band pass section, which is focused on the kick drum. So let's now play with boosting some distortion. And I'm also going to adjust the style of filter because we have a whole drop down selection to choose from, from classic to smooth to very gritty. Let's just check out what some of these options present. Pay attention specifically to the kick drum. Cool, and now I'm going to bring down the output volume. So we're relatively in the ballpark of where we started. Check it out. All right, so now we got a kick drum that's pretty prominent. We can also look at the other end of the spectrum, the claps and the hi-hats. But for now, I'm just gonna dial back the distortion a hair. This is how we can process in a multi-band fashion any instrument that we so choose using just the fat effects, where we can dial up the heat, the vibe, the bass enhancement. Now I wanna show you how I would use this with parallel compression because 
Parallel compression can add so much stability to an instrument, but sometimes you don't want to process the entire signal. Let me demonstrate. So I have a parallel channel here, and I'm going to turn it on. We're just going to solo that parallel channel. And I use the fat effects very often for parallel compression. Often, I'll set the distortion on Veradrive to about 20%. And then I'll turn on the compression module, and I have the amount negative 25. And then I bring down the output to about negative 16. This thing is going to be whacking on our drum kit. Just check it out. Pretty slam, right? Now, sometimes a particular element of the instrument that I'm planning on crushing is sort of overpowering the fat effects in a way that I don't like. Very often, it's the very, very, very bottom end, but it can also be the top end as well. So very often I like to use the bandpass filter to bracket around the sound that I want to squash and leave some of that very bottom end alone so it's not pushing the compressor and distortion so hard. So let's check it out. I'm going to play with the bandpass filter here. Okay, I'm bracketing the sound that I have here, but I feel like the filters are maybe cutting in a little too much. Let's play with the different filter options. I think the smooth filters make more sense and we can even play with the resonance knobs to just boost around those corner frequencies so we don't lose all of the bottom or all of the top. Cool, so let's blend this underneath our drum kit here. So I'm gonna drive down the volume all the way. Check it out. And in the mix. Now, some of these effects are a little exaggerated just for demonstration's sake, but the fat effects is such a handy tool. And I think it often gets overlooked as maybe more of an electronic musician or hip hop musician type of processor. But I use this constantly, especially for parallel compression on even acoustic drums, vocals, bass. I just love how this processor slams a signal. And then you can reintroduce everything else that you didn't want to process, just like a multiband compressor, just like multiband distortion thanks to the reject mix knob and this bandpass filter section. I really suggest giving this processor a try. Even though FatFX has been billed for mostly bass and drum usage, I find it very handy in many applications. So I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.